expert on GameSpot, MatPat's reality check. His infamous, more than famous, <laughs> mixture of humor, raw sincerity, honest love of people lead to hilarious but at their core serious discussions revolving around his frustration over how much people seem to desire to get in their own way. Master of terrible accessorizing, you will often find him mixing vests with his wallet chain, man buns, and bracelets. They're out of style. They went out of style in the short period between when I wrote that and now. <laughs> and almost invariably topping it off with a pad of, uh, pair of cat ears that you that have heard more than you'd ever want to know. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big welcome to my good friend and esteemed colleague, Johnny Christmas. Way early. Bring my mic down. Check, check, check. Who's on the board? Mostly noise? How's that? I'm mostly noise anyway, so that's going to be how this goes. Salute, everybody. A lot of echo. Do I need the mic? Can I turn it off? Okay. Can we bring it down a little bit more? It's feeding back. Check, 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 check. Can everyone hear that? That sounds good to me. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Guy who runs the con working the soundboard. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, we can clap for Dave, it's fine. <laughs> um, so my name is Johnny Christmas. Uh, I'm going to scream through this intro because uh, I'm late on my own accord. Uh, I was up till uh, 5.30 a.m. making these slides and this talk yesterday. Uh, Dave decided to keep us up till 3.30 working on the Information Security Guild that he discussed in his talk. Who saw Dave Cronister's talk this morning around 11? Cool. Good, good, good. I'm going to reference maybe one or two things that he talked about uh, in there. Um, I have a very off-the-cuff, impromptu style of speaking, uh, which is why I was able to throw 40 slides together between 3.30 and 6.30 a.m. and say, hey, let's try and give a talk. Um, what I wanted to do with this talk, well, first off, who's seen my other talks? Part one, part two. Who saw them here last year? Cool. It's <laughs> a lot of you. Glad to have you guys back. Um, what I wanted to do with part three was, uh, originally was uh, when I put parts one and part two together, which was all supposed to be just like one part, one end all be all. It was like four and a half hours long. Uh, and so I did a part one, a part two, and I still had like an hour and a half of material left. But it was all like sparse and all over the place, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with all this. Uh, and then it occurred to me that a lot of the stuff that was in there was things that I had learned from other people. And I thought that was a really cool idea because uh, normally I'm up here telling you what to do. Everybody thinks I'm this like big charismatic character that things like this just come naturally to me. Uh, and it's not true at all. I am constantly learning. I am constantly screwing up. I am constantly making people angry because I said the wrong thing at the wrong time. But uh, like I said, I'm constantly learning. Constantly learning from that. Mistakes are how we learn so long as we realize we made a mistake, look back, figure out what it was, uh, adjust, and try again next time. Uh, for those of you who have not seen the uh, last two talks, we'll go through uh, a really quick um, Ooh, that's not going to work at all. One second. There we go. Uh, we'll go through a really quick recap of what those were. So the, the idea behind this series of talks I wrote was uh, that we're stuck in this rut as a society, it seems, uh, where we're getting more and more afraid to leave our own homes. Um, we have 
this instant gratification bubble in our houses uh, where we have our Netflix, we have our PlayStation, we have our video games, we have anything we could ever want to watch or read or do on demand. Uh, and if we don't like it, there's something else we can watch or read or do always. Why would I go outside? Why would I bother going and meeting strangers, uh, going to meetups, going to conferences uh, when I don't like talking to strangers, I'm really shy, uh, I feel like I don't have a lot to say. I feel like I'm really awkward. Uh, I feel like when I go to InfoSec conferences that I know the least out of anybody there. Uh, I feel like I'm an imposter. Uh, I have no right to be here, so I'm just going to sit in the back of the room. I'm going to watch some talks. I'm going to take some notes, and I'm going to quietly slink out the back door when nobody's looking and go down with my life. Uh, the problem with that is you're doing yourself a great disservice. Uh, you're not networking anymore. None of us are making acquaintances. None of us are making business partnerships, business friends. Um, none of us are making friends in general. And that's especially difficult as adults. Um, who here has made a brand new friend that they, just a friend in general, that they regularly hang out with now in the past year? Almost nobody. I would say I counted five hands out of what's probably 40 people here. Uh, yeah, as adults, like we don't make friends anymore. And it's a combination of just being adults and having lives. But also, um, it's just something that we're getting away from as a society. And so I tried, I'm trying to fix that with these talks and say, here are some things you can do and practice, because I was the same way. I still am the same way. I still struggle with this daily. But here are things that I'm practicing uh, to get better at it. And these are things that I learned from people along the way. Um, in one of my last talks, I gave out a few really, really good books to read uh, that are great, like uh, hit the ground running, read these. These are direct information. These are open to very little interpretation. Uh, I love these books. And I'll have this presentation up online so you can take those too, uh, write those down. Or you're welcome to take pictures of my screens. You can take pictures of me. Go nuts. I love it. Throw them on Twitter. Um, I, uh, I've replaced one of them with this one that I've just started uh, really getting through really fast recently. Someone turned me on to this like four days ago, uh, my friend Kate Vida. Uh, this is a great book. Uh, it is like literally an instruction manual on how to start and maintain relationships in general uh, as an adult. And it's tons of little things you should be doing uh, while you're already doing something, which is what I love. Uh, it's like, it, so it doesn't require more of your time. It doesn't require a larger time investment. It's like, hey, if you're already doing this, you should also be doing this at the same time. Awesome, awesome book. Highly recommend it. I have not gotten through all of it so far, though. I really do love it, and I'm recommending it already. Um, I taught you guys last time how to, be, how to stop being creepers, how to stop hanging around in the backgrounds of places, how to stop sidling up behind people who are having conversations uh, and then not contributing. Um, I'm not going to get into that this time. Um, you can watch, I believe, part one discusses my grand unified creepiness theory, which some of you may remember. I had a very large mathematical equation where I actually mathed out what makes you creepy. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's up on my YouTube channel and my GitHub. Um, and we, the most important thing was we learned how to get out of the house. We learned how to start showing up. Uh, we know the, the old phrase that 80% of life is just showing up, Woody Allen, uh, and how even just showing up uh, gets you something. It gets you somewhere. Like If you're just banking on serendipity, just the fact that, oh, man, it was so cool I was there because I never would have met this guy, never would have met this person, never would have heard that they were hiring, um, just showing up. Getting out of that house, going to where the people are, does so much. Um, yes, this is funny. I, anybody know who this guy is? You're familiar with his work? He does this thing where he stands in front of people who are making out and just has this complete deadpan face. And he's got a whole Tumblr page dedicated to it. And it's amazing. And I just love him. But he's showing up. He's not having a great time, but he's, <laughs> he's there. Um, so what we're going to dive into this time, like I said, is things other people have taught me things I was very, very bad at, uh, some things I'm still bad at, uh, that I'm still learning, but this is, these are the things that I've found the most success with, the things that work, the things 
that other people have done that blew my mind where it's like, oh my God, of course I should be doing that. That's amazing. I love that you do that. And so I talked to them. I interviewed them. Some of them you may know. I'll bring their names up uh, and we'll go through it. Um, let's talk first about not leaving the house. Let's talk about social networking. Um, social networking is a huge, important, critical means, unfortunately, of keeping in touch, of making new friends, of sharing information. Uh, a lot of people think that it's a waste of time. Uh, it sucks up company resources. Um, if you're not utilizing it properly, that is completely valid, totally true. Uh, social networking is a very, very, very big and easy time sink. It's an easy place to get stuck in a rut of not learning anything and not helping anyone else learn, and yet you've lost entire days to just arguing about which type of mac and cheese is the best mac and cheese, which I understand is important, but not uh, really great for business purposes. Um, by far, uh, let's talk about how you should be using social networking. This is where I get a lot of success. You may need to tweak this a bit to work around your schedule and what you're able to do. Uh, it's going to take some practice to ramp up into this because, like I said, it's easy to get lost. It's easy to screw it up. It's easy to not get anything out of it. Uh, social networking effectiveness is very much an intermediate to advanced situation. Um, what I like to do is about five to ten minutes every hour, usually while I'm working, I'll take my break. You should be taking a break of at least five minutes every hour when you're working anyway. Even just getting up, stretching, just doing something for five minutes to kind of get your eyes off of whatever you're doing, regroup, and often you'll come back at it with uh, a fresh perspective, better ideas. Um, go through your feeds, uh, see what's going on. Definitely use lists, uh, that's specifically for Twitter, use Twitter lists. Uh, if you just follow a ton of people on Twitter, uh, you're going to get this massive flood of possibly, probably completely useless information. And that's what I see a lot of people doing. They're like, yeah, I'm on Twitter. I got, I don't know, I, I follow you. I follow a lot of people. I don't know. Like, there's nothing really on it. It's mostly people just yelling and complaining about things. Uh, and that's true. That's what Twitter is. Twitter is awful. Uh, far and wide. All social networks are just full of completely useless garbage. What you need to work on is finding those diamonds in the rough. And you, you find that by seeing who's actually consistently talking about things you like and creating little lists and groups of those people. And I'll talk about why you should use lists versus just calling down who you follow uh, in another slide because both of those things are really important. Following lots of people versus actually having lists that have information that you want to read inside of them. Um, the prime time for Twitter is primarily during business hours for whatever area the users are in. Uh, being Americans, uh, we're prob you're probably going to just want to float around prime time for central time because that will capture most of the stuff. Uh, but that's also important to know because uh, that's the time people are going to see what you post the most. Uh, so if you are upset because you put a lot of stuff on Twitter, you tried posting something cool you're working on, or you're asking questions, and nobody ever gets back to you. Nobody sees it. It just hasn't been effective for you. Make sure that you're putting it up there when somebody is going to see it. Um, we have another problem now. Uh, it used to be just a Facebook problem, and recently it's become a Twitter problem as well, where our timelines are no longer chronological. Who's noticed that? Where you look in your Twitter feed and you go, this, somebody posted this eight hours ago. Why is this at the top of my feed? That's well, because they use these SEL algorithms now to determine what you most likely want to see in your feed. You know, instead of asking you, it just tries to figure it out for you. And then you don't know what's going on at that point in time anymore, which is really uh, terrible if you're following something in real time that's really important. Um, so a great way to fix that, uh, aside from using the lists, which I can't tell if using lists helps or not. It seems to as far as chronologicalness goes, but I think there's still some walking, wonkiness, but I haven't worked on proving it yet. Um, so a thing you can do, even passively, is just retweet things that you approve of and like, and don't, don't just repeat, retweet funny garbage, don't retweet memes, just stop that. You're just making the problem worse. Um, you're not making yourself look any better. Retweet things that are important to you, things that are related to what you're working on, things that you want people to know about you, that you care about. Um, like 
those same things. Um, if you have a comment to make that's helpful, make that comment. Don't just comment, yeah, me too. Uh, you know, don't, don't do that. If, but make a comment that is helpful. Make a comment that may instigate a conversation with that person. Uh, don't instigate. Don't start fights with people. If you disagree with what they're doing, uh, disagree in a respectful manner and allow a conversation to open and allow yourself to be wrong. Allow yourself to be proven wrong and accept it and admit it. Uh, I have made a lot of acquaintances, a lot of friends. I have smoothed over a lot of bumpy roads, which is saying, wow, no, you're right. I was wrong. That's really cool. Thanks for telling me that. It makes them feel good, A, because now somebody else tells them they're right. We all love to be told we're right. B, um, they think you're cool because you'll admit when you're wrong, which is such a rare quality, which seems stupid. It's easy to go, wow, I was wrong, especially like we're all, we're all IT people probably. Um, a lot of us are engineers. Um, we're very interested in science usually. Uh, by nature of that, we should be accepting that there's a very large potential that we're wrong always, forever, with everything. Uh, admitting that is not admitting defeat. It's not admitting that you're stupid. It's just saying, it's admitting that you've learned something. It's admitting that you're now more intelligent just from having this conversation. Cool, I was wrong. Thanks for telling me that. And then make sure you actually put that to use, whatever knowledge that was. Uh, so once you're doing the RTing, the liking, the comedy, the commenting, the conversation rolling, um, that's going to notify those people that you did that. As soon as you hit like, they get a notification. Um, especially if they have, I want to say, most people with probably under three to 5,000 followers are going to keep the notifications on their phone. Uh, they'll get that notification, which makes them go, oh, cool, let me see who said what or did what. And they're going to open the app. That, in the background, increases your desirability number within that algorithm for that user by one. Let's say one. I don't actually know how that algorithm works. I don't know what that value is, but we're going to say one. So every time that user looks at something that you did to their stuff, your desirability level to them increases. And so the algorithm is going to increase how often you appear in their news feed every time they click on you. Because it's going to think you guys are getting to be more and more and more friends, which is probably valid, uh, unless you're just like spamming, uh, and then you're creepy. Like That's weird. Like I have that happen all the time, where right? people come out of the woodwork and will just flood a bunch of likes down my stream, and I go, who is this? This is weird. Who is stalking me? So don't do that. Don't just like stuff to make people like you, because it doesn't. It's the, it's the equivalent of just having a yes man that follows you around and going, wow, cool, oh, that's neat. Hey, cool, great, what are we doing? Wow, neat. Like, just like that, that fast. It's, it's weird and nobody likes that. Uh, so then they're going to check their feed next time. Tomorrow they're just going to go out see what's up with Twitter, and they're going to start seeing you in there. And now you've got the attention of someone that you're interested in and maybe uh, working together with. So make sure then when that's happening that there's something in there worth seeing to them. Make sure you're not posting pictures of your lunch, uh, unless it's just an amazing architecture of lunch. Um, make sure it's interesting. Uh, you, interesting doesn't have to be some crazy hack or mod that you're working on. You don't have to be overthrowing world governments. You don't have to be protesting and inciting riots. You could just be funny. Make sure you're consistently funny, and make sure you're not always funny. Because then you're just a chucklehead. If you're guy, the guy in line who's just making jokes about something that every, everybody posts all the time, that's, that, that wears thin really quick. But do make a joke once in a while. Don't always be serious. But if you're working on something that you think is interesting, post about it. Post where you're at with it. Post a picture of it if it's something picture worthy. I just uh, restored an old console record player from the late 1950s. Uh, it has nothing to do with information security, hacking, overthrowing governments. I thought that was really cool. And a lot of us are engineering, and I was like, there's got to be something else, somebody else who thinks that's cool. Who, who here thinks that's cool, like restoring old console record players from the 50s? Yeah, it's just kind of a neat thing. You don't have to be into it. You don't have to know how to do it. But if somebody posted a bunch of pictures of the guts of something, and yeah, it's cool stuff. So I try to just post what I'm working on. 
that I think was interesting. And you generate a lot of people that come from different sources who like the different things that you do. And then you get this really wide audience. Uh, and that's great, because then, no matter what you're doing, what you're working on, you're probably going to have good conversations rolling uh, about that. And you're making friends. And then hopefully, you're going to meet them in person one day somewhere at a conference or something like that. Uh, or maybe never. But maybe one day you're going to be working on something and you're stuck. And you can post a question about that. And somebody's going to respond and go, I know what that is. Here's how we can fix that. Um, but don't get so deep in there that it sucks up all of your day. That's not, that, that's not what you should be doing. Like I said, five to 10 minutes an hour. And the more followers you get, the easier it is to get sucked into there. Um, if somebody sends you a question or starts a conversation with you, have that conversation. Respond to them. Definitely respond to people, because that's what makes people like you. Having a conversation, you're making them feel important, even if you think you're the most unimportant person on Earth. They think you're important at that moment in time enough to ask you a question about what you're doing. Uh, and go ahead and have that conversation, because that's, that's networking. That is the networking part of social networking. Surprisingly, it's also the social part. Um, so I get that I'm not on Twitter thing a lot, because I go, are you on Twitter? I just put it on Twitter. Did you see that on Twitter? I can send it to you on Twitter. For whatever reason, I, I, I don't know how this happened. It does not make any sense, given the fact that we work in a realm of, of enforcing privacy and personal security. Twitter has this massive community uh, of the most active hackers and infosec professionals. Seems weird. They're out there. It's crazy. Um, who, who got on Twitter just because they're in infosec and heard that's the place to be? Quite a few of you. Um, for those of you who haven't, check it out. It's out there. And in fact, you don't even have to post anything on Twitter. Just get on and start calling your feeds and do that to get started. Um, the, one of the coolest things about the tiers in this community is that there's very few. Um, we're all pretty much one degree of separation away from the people that a lot of you call rock stars. Uh, most of those rock stars uh, are there and ready and willing to have conversations with people because they're not really rock stars. They're just people. They're just doing something that you think is cool. And they, they're doing it because they think it's cool. And they want to talk about it. If you have a question about somebody who's doing something that somebody who's way up there is doing that's really cool, don't be like, ah, oh, he's too busy. I'm not going to tweet at him. He's not Shia LaBeouf. They're not like celebrities who get 40 trillion messages, then they'll never see yours. Um, our community is still incredibly small. It's tiny. It's super tiny. And because of that, uh, A, even like the people who are just getting flooded with messages all day, it rarely gets beyond a manageable extent. Um, they may be busy and not get back to you for a while, but definitely attempt. You know, if you want to, if you want to try tweeting at Charlie Miller or Dave Kennedy, Dave Kennedy responds all the time. Um, these people are like, oh man, I wish I could be as cool as them. Don't be afraid to talk to them. They're out there, and Twitter is an amazing, amazing way to get in direct touch with them. Um, and like I was saying before, properly configured and utilized. It may very well be the most efficient, widest reaching method we have at our disposal for connecting to nearly all of the most influential people operating in these two fields, the hacking and the infosec. It's crazy. It's a direct, it's the bat phone. It's the bat phone to every Batman working uh, in hacking and infosec. Um, but like I said, you have to tweak that. The reason you hate social networking if you do, most likely, is because you tried it and you're like, what, what is this? I don't want to look at this. I don't want to see 40,000 pictures of someone's baby that I don't even know. This is, why do people, how are people on here? If your Twitter feed is bad, if your Facebook feed is bad, it's because you're bad at creating that feed. You're just letting a computer give you the default algorithm that it gives to everybody. And you may not be everybody. Um, I'm certainly not everybody. I'm far from everybody. And I don't think any of us, is anybody here everybody? Show a hand, no, okay. That'd be awkward if everybody was in here. So you do have to tweak it. It's a tool. It's like any other new tool, application, device that you stand up. You can't just plug it in and then walk away and go, well, I hope, I hope that works. No, it doesn't. Well, it's because the thing sucks. Oh, well, throw it out. It's a tool. 
you have to configure it. Uh, and so, like I said, creating those lists is going to help. You're going to have to sit in front of it for a few weeks and pick and choose. But really, once you get that rolling, uh, it can be incredibly useful, and I highly recommend it. Um, one, this is the worst slide ever. It's intentionally, and I thought it was funny. <laughs> um, because you're also trying to not necessarily make a name for yourself, but get your face out there. Go, hey, I'm a guy who's doing these things. Pay attention to me, too. Uh, I'm a woman who's working in this really cool field that there aren't a lot of you in, and I want to talk about it. But you've got 12 followers, and it's just not going anywhere. And half of them are your family. And you're like, well, why, why am I going to use Twitter? I only got 12 followers. This is dumb. Uh, I'm going to show you a trick. And it's going to seem sketchy at first, but I'm going to explain it. It's apple juice. Um, most people, by common courtesy and social contract that we've established on Twitter, if you follow them, they're going to follow you back. That's common courtesy. Like, it's them saying, hey, I'm really interested in what you're doing. I want to hang out and just take a look. It's common for you to go, cool, me too. I'll see what you're up to. And it's very hands off. You don't actually ever have to talk. It's just that, like, mutual, like, we agree that we're, we're not fighting. That's really all following. Uh, and so you can get more followers by following people. And the more people that you follow, the more people are going to follow you, etc. And it goes in this circle. Um, I wrote a Python script using the Twitter API to uh, try and do that. Because for the longest time, I wasn't following anybody. Because I had all my lists, and I was like, I don't understand the purpose of following when I can just add someone to a list and I can see all their, what they're doing. What's this following stuff? Forget this. This doesn't make any sense. But the problem was, because I wasn't following anybody, nobody followed me. Um, it was just, that's, it, it doesn't make any sense, but that's the way it is. Because most people aren't using those lists. They're only using their follower feed. So, unfortunately, everybody else is terrible at Twitter. And so you have to kind of roll with working your way into their terrible usage of it. Uh, so um, who here knows Python to a decent extent, to any extent? Very few. Uh, this is how I learned Python. Best way to learn any program language is to write something in that language that you want to, you go, I need a tool that does this. Uh, I'm going to learn Python and do it. This was super easy. So I kicked around the idea of like, oh, I should drop my code for this this Twitter program I wrote that does this, so everybody can use it. It's like, wait, well, A, no, people are going to abuse it. B, um, make them do it themselves. It was really, really easy. I'm talking maybe an hour. The Twitter API is super well documented. Uh, I'm not a programmer by any means. Um, I specialize in like bash scripting is the closest I normally get to any kind of programming. Um, Python was incredibly easy. Um, there's a great Python library called uh, Twitter-Python. Uh, it's well documented. And the Twitter API is well documented. Super easy to use. Um, most people who are familiar, just generally familiar with scripting can crank out a Twitter API Python script. So give that a try. Um, what I did, so it's super easy to just be like create a follow canon and just say, go follow the entire internet. And then I'll have a trillion followers. Uh, don't do that because you're just creating this, you, this, this massive list of untargeted followers who don't give a crap what you're talking about. And you're just shooting yourself in the foot. You just, you, you're making a mess and talking to animals at the zoo. It just makes no sense. So what I did is I found Twitter users uh, that I highly respect who are operating in fields that I'm very, that I am also operating in. And I'm interested in making those people, uh, the people who follow person X, also follow me. Because we're all operating in the same field. And I'm like, we're all doing the same thing. You guys should look over here. And so this is the, this is the equivalent of, like, of going into the hallway at Show Me Con and going, hey! And everyone's at least going to look over and see what's going on. Um, so you find a person who's operating a field that you are also operating in. And you look at who they're following. And then you follow all those people. Hopefully they have lists. And if they have a list that's like, that specifies what's in that list, that's like hardware hackers, you know, things like that, go, oh, cool, I can target that exact list of people. So they've already done all this work 
of calling out a really good list of people they're interested in, and you can trust that list because you trust the, the person who made it because you've been following that person and you like the work they do. So then you just follow everyone in that list. A lot of people in that list are then going to come back and follow you, and then you have to come back with interesting information. You have to not just be a PUD who's just stealing followers. You have to go uh, and then start uh, posting useful information there. So uh, we're going to skip over this because it's kind of what I talked about already. Um, this other stuff, uh, the Facebook, the uh, Facebook's great for in, invite, uh, event invites. That's it. Nothing, nothing else. Yeah. Don't bother. Uh, LinkedIn, only really good for like if you're trying to do professional blogging to do bigger write-ups of the things you're working on because at the very least people are going to go to your LinkedIn to look at your uh, resume and they're going to see your blogs on the bottom of them and it's like uh, more information on what I'm doing. Other than that, nobody really uses LinkedIn for anything social. And then Google Plus is just, uh, it's just a dumpster fire. There's, <laughs> there's nothing going on in there. Uh, don't bother with it. Um, so that's my treatise on um, human networking. We're running really short uh, on time, so I'm going to have to skip over that section. But uh, I want to talk about socializing. Um, we end up in very small groups here at bars, at meetups, um, and we, we end up having these little tiny parties of people hanging out over here, well, there's groups of people over there hanging out too. And just these like little tiny parties, and like sometimes they're not going anywhere. Sometimes it's a lot of people just sitting there, just drinking their drink, talking about nothing, um, and you're not really sure what to do. Um, it's very loud. It's hard to talk to anybody. Uh, what I like to do in those situations is um, escape. Uh, be like, guys, it's really loud. Why don't we go over here, try to talk about something, and then be like, hey, come on, let's go out in the hallway. Or I want to show you guys this. I want to talk about this. Kind of lead the group away. Uh, find a, you know, a corner, a bar room. Um, you can leave there. You can go get dinner. Is it a meetup before dinner? Go, hey, do you want to grab dinner? Do you want to grab dinner? Let's go get dinner and get four or five people. And you can go out um, and throw these tiny, little, constrained, self-contained parties that are not reliant on the greater meetup that's going on. Um, if there's a lull in the conversation, um, my friend Deviant, who knows Deviant, Deviant Alam, he's at a lot of the cons. Uh, he did this really cool thing that I really liked, and I was like, oh my god, that's amazing. What a great idea. Um, he just goes around the room and makes people talk about things that they really like talking about. Uh, he, does, he introduced me to first con, best con, and it wasn't an intentional thing, it was just a thing he did, and I was like, that's great, you should do that. And that was just go around and go, hey, what was the first con you went to? What was the best con you went to? Like, one and then the other. And Benjamin, you were there, weren't you? Carolina con? And like, it was an amazing party and everybody gets super passionate about talking about this. And next thing you know, everybody in that room is like best friends. And you went from being like strangers to some guy you had seen one time to being like, every time you see each other, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna have that connection, that bonding. And it's all about just like this emotional bonding because we do everything based on emotion. Um, well, favorite one of mine was like, who was your crush in second grade? Because that's rarely a, a, something that people are still weird about talking about. It's just funny because it was always some stupid story because having a crush in second grade is weird to begin with. Um, so you're just, you're feeling like you're connecting with people because you are connecting with people. It's really that easy. Um, when, we gener when we have positive emotions, we generate oxytocin and that oxytocin makes us bond. It's, ex it's exactly what happens. It's a completely chemical process. Um, so. Uh, don't bring up bad situations. We're bad at being empathic as engineers uh, with bad situations because all we want to do is solve the problem. And most people who like have a bad situation, they're not looking to solve the problem, they just want to vent. And it just gets in this really bad cycle. I, I, how many people have been there where so the person's getting more mad and you're just trying to help them? It's just, it's a bad time. So don't bring up, don't ask about bad things. Bring up good situations. Who is your second grade crush? Which I'm sure, but, hey, who's married to the person they we had a crush on in second grade. Probably nobody. So I guess that ended poorly, but it's been long enough that it's still a funny, good situation. Um, so just keep it positive, and you're going to keep that oxytocin flowing, and you're going to keep bonding with people, and it's going to be amazing. Um, we'll skip the audience participation. I was going to ask you guys for more ideas. Um, so um, you're going to get to a point where you have too many people trying to capitalize your time, trying to monopolize your time. 
And you're going to try to get... What a terrible sign. What a terrible sign. <laughs> um, almost done. So uh, you're going to get overwhelmed. And you're going to try to talk to everybody all the time. You're going to only have like two minutes for any one person. And you're going to start losing these people. And they're going to start thinking, oh, he got too busy. He's too important for everybody. Um, get your calendar out. Schedule time to catch up. And I see a lot of salespeople do that at these conferences where they'll come in and they'll go, hey, do you have time for lunch Tuesday? Let's catch up for 30 minutes. What are you doing after dinner? Start scheduling little 30-minute catch-ups with people. That works amazingly well. Um, that's what people have been doing with me here. I just learned this one today and made the, or yesterday made this slide. I was like, oh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, let's, let's take 30 minutes. Let's, let's go for a walk. Let's make sure that for 30 minutes we hang out, we catch up. Uh, where the, you could do that at work. You could do that at your meetups. Uh, you could do that at conferences. Um, and so now you've got, yeah, let me go back real quick. So, yeah, I'll go for it. Okay. So, <laughs> really short on time. They tell me to shut up. <laughs> I'm going to finish it up here. Uh, so, um, the smallest, tiniest party out there is you. Uh, you're always you. You're always constantly with yourself, and you're always keeping an eye on number one. You're always trying to keep yourself entertained, fulfilled. You're always trying to make sure that you're good before anyone else is good. Uh, and so, that... When you get too busy, you can get into this rut of being completely self-serving, where you're like, I'm too busy, I just make, need to make sure that my stuff's in order, uh, and then that's all I got time for, and I gotta get out. Um, if you're doing anything, ask yourself, can I also do that thing for one other person? Can I uh, be doing something concurrently while I'm doing that for someone else? And I'm talking like even little dumb stuff. Getting coffee, like, oh man, I just, I gotta run downstairs, I'm gonna get coffee. Can I get some coffee for someone else? Hey, can I get you? I'm going to get a coffee. Do you want a coffee? Can I get you? Just, just always, whenever you're doing anything alone, if you're getting up to do something alone for yourself, real quick, go, can I do that for someone else? Even if you know you can't, ask anyway. People love that. People love knowing that they're being paid attention to, that you remember them. Even if it's dumb stuff, like, and it's a person in the cube behind you, you go, hey, I'm going to get coffee. You want a coffee? Who doesn't like that? Who doesn't like when someone asks if you want a coffee? Even if you don't drink coffee, like just that they thought of you. Like, no, thanks. Like, um, I, I really like to do birthdays if it's someone's birthday, because everyone should have you know a good birthday dinner or something. If someone's birthday at work, go, hey man, well, let's go out. Why don't we get a steak for your birthday after work? Um, or put together like a little work party for someone's birthday. Four people, do that lunch at work. That's so effective. Uh, again, my friend, my friend Kate Vida does that. She'll just be like, oh, it's Chris's birthday. Let's all go out for lunch for Chris's birthday. Just that. And Chris it goes, I can't believe you even knew it was my birthday and we did something. I'm like, 34. Who does birthdays at 34? Just those little things. Don't always be self-serving. Um, so this whole thing we're talking about, all of this today is all about, it's social engineering. And we always put this negative spin on social engineering. We're like, ah, it's, we're, we're trying to break in. We're trying to convince people to do something dumb so that I can attack them. Um, and that's what it is. But it's not always bad. Uh, it's only bad if you make it bad. Yeah, we're manipulating people. Yeah, we're you know trying to get them to go along with something they wouldn't have otherwise. But it's because we're trying to be efficient. We're trying to uh, just you know, in, increase the speed at which we become friends, at which we, become, we get to know each other, which we become business partners. Uh, and it's for the, the mutual benefit of everyone. Don't force that if it ain't happening. Don't start lying to people. Don't start tricking them just because they're going to be useful to you. Uh, that's like meth. It's like, it seems really good at first. Like it works out really well. But in the long run, you're going to have no teeth left. So just not even once. Do not, do not ever manipulate anyone for your own personal gain. It will not work out in the long run. I promise you. Bottom line for all of this, if you want to just gain more people in your network, have more effective partnerships, more effective friends, more efficient and effective life, just, just be good. In the words of Neo, just be excellent to each other. Uh, and that's all I've got time for today. I've got to wrap it up. Thank you very much for being here.